Hello YouTube, Danestra83 back again. Quite quick concession to my last video, but um, it's been week two of the booters in January, and uh, I've done all right. I've done all right. We've got some uh, decent pickups, mainly to sell and move on. In fact, everything from the booter, bar maybe one or two items, is going to be to sell. Um, and uh, what else do I do? I had a pickup from CEX. So I'll feature that in this video. Um, and that's it really. I'll probably do a couple of shout outs maybe. Uh, later on in the video. Um, but want to say hello to the new subscribers. We've had a fair few new subscribers in the, the last week. Obviously newer channels have been mentioning me. Because I mentioned them in their last video. That's kind of how YouTube works. Um, and we've sneaked over the 300 mark. I think we're on 304 as I speak. So... I'm not going to waffle on too much, although I probably will. But um, we'll go straight into the boot sale pickup. So Saturday boot sale um, wasn't too bad. We hadn't had much rain. I probably won't be going to the Saturday one this week because as I look out the window, it's absolutely pissing it down. So I probably won't be going to the Saturday boot sale this week. So only going to be Sunday boot sale pickup if I do a video next week. The way I'm feeling at the moment, I probably will. So there'll probably be more content coming on this channel. Just because everything's a little bit easier for me at the moment. So, what did I pick up first? Um, what did I pick up first? I think I picked up this little Space Invaders money box. I've already got one of these on my shelves. Um, I think it was a pound. Nice little item. You pull the, the bottom off. It's a... Just, I just keep my changing actually for the boot sale because every time I spend something I'll get some change. I try and keep it to one side for the boot sale just so I've got some change. Um, then, what did I pay for this? I think I paid, yeah I definitely did, I know I, know I did, I paid £2.50 for this. Xbox 360 controller, the sticks are in okay condition so CX should take it. I need to clean it up and I need to find I've got a box somewhere of Xbox 360 controller parts because CX won't take it Jesus with these uh, battery compartments in I mean you can you know if you're buying one of these to take CX this is the part you need to check you need to look for that serial number and you need to look them can connectors haven't got any corrosion in but uh, £2.50 I have a feeling I bought something else with this because I'll give him a fiver but for love and the money, can I think what it was? So, I don't know. I must have bought something else the weekend and I can't find it. Um, the next bundle. What did he charge with these? I think these were... I think I paid £5 for the lot. There's some gaming figures and a few Star Wars. So There's like a little wind-up uh, ghost from Pac-Man. And then there's obviously Pac-Man. They do work. I have tried them. Um, little Mario Peril Mushroom. Again, these were all just in a box. And I just rummaged through. He had got some other figures, but I didn't know what they were. So these look all like either Rogue One or Power of the Force, except for one of them. I don't know what character this is. I don't know if it's going to focus either. I don't actually understand how a focus works on a camera. I'm sure it should look at the closest thing. Uh, Chewbacca. Does I even help or see people do that? Um, Kylo Ren. A couple of different variants of uh, Ray, obviously. Really would love to know how that focus works. And this one's actually, um, it's not 1977, it is 1978. It's one of the droids. It's in nice condition. So it seems I'll probably get between 10 15 pounds for that one when I sell it. Probably go at Birmingham because I did sell a lot last time at the Birmingham Toy Fair, which I did mention the next one. 
is going to be on, I think is it February? I did mention in my last video. Go and check out my last video. Although I can see the piece of paper that tells me the dates in front of me. Um, I bought some books. They are gaming books. I paid £10 for the pile. I wasn't sure if I'd paid for that. These are actually a series. I think I've seen these on um, Chris's shelf. Formerly Zelda Collector. Now he's the Age of Nerd. So obviously that's good that way. They're Zelda books. It's a complete set. They're like a manga style. So they read the opposite way to how we would normally read. So that's a complete set. I looked up these go for about 30 quid the full set. I'll obviously be moving them on because I'm not a massive fan of Zelda and I don't really read many comics or anything like that. So yeah, £10 for them. They're in good condition. The guy said he got more, so I'm not obviously going to see him this Saturday because I'm not. Here. Unless we have blistering sun from like in the time I finish this video till tomorrow morning, I'm not going, so chances are slim. And then this book that I'll probably keep myself, it is unfortunately slightly damaged, but it's called Super Mario How Nintendo Conquered America. I've looked this up and it seems to be only available to get from America. There's not even any uh, UK stamp stampings on it really. It was printed in New York, so that'll be going up with my other books. In fact, I need to sort out my bookshelf because I've got some up there, some up there, and I've got shelf of tat here that I'm gonna I'm gonna sort it out later today because I've I've started making a mess of the games room again I don't want to get in the situation I was in last year where I didn't want to do videos I didn't want to come in here and face tidy and it all so that's actually something for my own collection as is maybe the next item because I'm pretty sure I've got the second and third one in this series and I don't think I've got this one and it's actually in really nice condition I paid a pound for it and that's Taito Legends saying it right am I, I think because uh was it David plays games badly? Was he? I think everyone called it Taito, but it's actually Taito. So whatever. Um, it's in nice condition. It's actually got the art card. I'm pretty sure none of my others have got the art card. So this will either be an upgrade if I've got it, or it just will go to the collection because I haven't got it. But uh, I'm, I've not seen them with the art card very often, so that's pretty cool. This looks like it's hardly been played. So for a quid, I think that's a quid well spent. And the final item, God, this guy was brilliant, man. He was just, I don't even know how he packed up. I'm, I'm glad I didn't anger anything. He was literally, he was pulling bin bags full of random stuff, mainly electrical items, looked like shop clearance, just junk, really. And he was just ripping the bin bags open and chucking them on his tarpaulin. And I was thinking, well, how are you packing them away, man? Unless he got like a, Roller bin bags in his front of his car seat, and he's putting it all back in there. I was just thinking that was the craziest way I've ever seen anyone set up a stall. But he got this line on the floor, and I probably should have rummaged a bit harder and see if he got another one because it's actually the NES controller for the uh, Switch, and these come in a pair. I think it was when um, the Nintendo shop was putting all the NES classics on, they released these. But yeah, he wanted three quid for it. I said, I'll give you two. And he was like, yeah, no problem. So that was my last pickup. And again, something else for the collection. So it's not very often I go to the boot sale now and I find stuff for the collection. It's why I tend to buy stuff for CEX trade so I can then add stuff to the collection. Which, incidentally, I've ordered five items from uh, CEX, which will hopefully be here tomorrow. So there may be, I might do a separate CEX pickup video. Or I might just chuck it on the back end of my next week's video or the beginning of next week's video. So hopefully they will come soon. Might even see if anyone even care if I blind bag them and show him on the thingy because I know what's in there anyway. Just depends on what condition it is, you know. I do the old thing where I gamble, I buy a box and hope it comes complete. But you're always playing Russian roulette with that. So anyway, on to Sunday. Now this is going to be a mixture of the car boot and the market that we went to because it was hard going on there Sunday at the car boot because obviously because of the weather, the other local one to me was called off. So literally, I mean I was there, what time was we there? Me and Leah, four o'clock we were there, four o'clock because it's an indoor one. 
and there must have been 20, 30 people buying the sort of stuff we want, games. I missed out on a massive bundle of classic Star Wars figures because the stall it was on, the guy had all got Power of the Four stuff boxed and it was battered. And at no point did it inkling to me to ask, have you got any vintage stuff? Because there was nothing there. Like if you'd have got one random toy that was vintage, I'd have picked that up and then gone, have you got any more? But he didn't, so I didn't. And then I went past later and saw some guy hoovering a carrier bag for, and it was a big carrier bag, like bag for life sort of size. And it looked like he'd got a, at least Jabba the Hutt's pit, which was a bit gutting because I could have sold that on. Anyway, I digress. So we hadn't picked much gaming stuff up, but this guy had got a box of uh, like toys on the floor. And I saw one sticking out, and I asked him how much. He said 50p an item. So I basically got a load of stuff together. I hid some stuff inside the vehicles I'm about to show you, because I wasn't paying 50p for them when I was paying 50p for a big, massive vehicle. I know it's a bit shady, but still. So anyway, they're not in great condition. They're not complete. But I can strip them down for parts and sell them for more than 50p. Uh, so you've got Rhino from Mask, which is obviously missing the cab door and the side door. It has got the top flap that's usually missing, and it has got the back, oh, the back part that clips off, um, and the rest of it does work. So I had this as a kid. I love this figure. Um, I do love masks, to be honest. In general, it's such a cool franchise. But yeah, it's missing a few parts. I'll probably sell it spares and repairs at one of the toy events, along with some of the other stuff. So at that, I, I mean, I wasn't paying 50p for all these individual little items. So I hid them in the cab of there. So you got Matt Tracker's son's robot that got hid inside. That's from Mask. You're all thinking, what a shady bastard. This is from a toy car series where um, you obviously put the key in the back, squeeze this bit here, and they shoot off. And I only thought about this because uh, when I was at the Birmingham Toy Fair, there was a guy who, who I got one of these cars. And he said, he said, it's a shame. He said, because you can never find the keys. They're called Kidco 1980. It's got written on it. So now I've got more chance of selling that car. Now I've got the little thing that goes in the back of it. So that was in there. Oh, I meant to look up this character's name. He's one of Venom's bad guys. Again, I hid him in the truck. Miles Mayhem's mask, which I've actually got um, Switchblade and Miles uh, Mayhem, so he's not got his helmet, so now that's complete, so I can sell that for a little bit more, because as silly as it seems, the money's in the mask, not in the figure, if you know what I mean, because that's the bit that got lost. Um, I'm hoping this is the vintage Millennium Falcon dish. Because I've got a Millennium Falcon and one of the parts missing is the dish. I do need the antenna stand for the dish. But if this is the vintage one, I can buy that. And then I'm literally only two pieces away from having a complete one to sell. Which one of them is the Jedi training ball, which everyone loses. I don't even think there's many original ones around. They're all uh, repros. So yeah, I've got that. Thunderbirds 1 from 1992. I remember these being released because my dad was massively getting me into Thunderbirds, Stingray. He tried to get me into Joe Knight as well because obviously I guess it's like us other than this fucking new Thundercats thing they bought out which is absolute a bag of shit. If they re-released um, say, I don't know, Thundercats or He-Man in a decent quality and we got young kids, we'd encourage them to. So dad did the exact same thing with me with Thunderbirds. I had a ton of Thunderbirds VHSs. I had Tracy Island, and I had all these. The only thing I didn't have is the bigger versions that you could put the figures in. I had all the figures, but not the bigger versions. And I see them at the boot sale. Um, so yeah, that's just just a little story. Oh, my old man. Oh God, what was the other one he made? Fireball XL5. He tried to get me into because I think he was convinced that they were bringing everything back, and he was off. His favourite was Fireball XL5, and he bought me a. VHS of Fireball X or Five is black and white. And I vaguely remember. I'm not singing the fucking theme tune because I remember the tune. But my dad loved that. And it was funny because like we used to sit down and watch that. So yeah, Thunderbirds, little Thunderbirds figure. Um, another mask vehicle. Again, it's just parts. 
It's got the visor though, which is quite cool because that slides. They should have designed a lot of visors like that because these are the bits that fucking go missing on stuff. And the spring action still working. That's the important thing with masks. They've got often got spring-loaded parts that knacker up. Um, Another mask vehicle again. This one works. I was going to try and do it, but I don't want it to shoot at my camera. Really, yeah, it, like fires out and becomes a boat. So another one again. I'll just put it spares and repairs. Fifty pence. It, I'm going to get more than fifty pence for it, aren't I? Let's be honest. So. Uh, and to complete that little lot, I just chucked these little. Oh, I didn't even look what year this was. It's it's a Lotus from J the James Bond film. Not in great condition, but I do know some people do restore these. So again, fifty p. I wasn't gonna. Make. In fact, it wasn't even fifty p. So I put all this together, and I'm sure he told me three pound. A little bit of a failure. It's a transformer, but I think it's a more modern one. Yeah, it's from two thousand and six. But pff, again, it probably cost me pence. Uh, this is a Toyota, what the fuck am I on about, Toyota Hilux, and I believe it's a GoBot, I used to have this one as a kid, and it's got that mechanism, where it's meant to spark out the back, where I think the flint's gone inside, so it doesn't spark anymore, but it probably does go along again, that'll go on the stall at Birmingham, and the final one, I think this is Gen 2, what year is it? 1986, I'm pretty sure that's Generation 2, looking at the colour scheme from it, Transformer. I'm not transforming them all, because I, I just can't be bothered, but they do all work, they're complete. Again, that whole bundle from Rhino to this piece, cost me three quid. And it's, I'm quite glad I got it, because that store we had missed out on a, got a N64, there was Four N64 power supplies and about 10 games, but he wanted 100 quid. There was no system. So like we weren't that bothered about that, but we had missed out on a PlayStation bundle that was on the floor. And the guy hadn't actually cleared it away, so my mate Liam was looking through it. And the guy who bought it went, oh, I've bought that. I'm like, well, if you fucking bought it, either get the guy to put it behind his stall or carry it. Don't get arsy if someone's looking at your shit that you're not looking after. Anyway, I'm digressing anymore. Um... I'm going to show you some more figures. I didn't get these from Carbo. These were all in a bag at the market because we did that shite at the boot sale. We decided to get to the market on the way home. And I'm glad we did because I got this pick up and we both went into CEX and bought some stuff. So these worked out just under £2 each. So you've got Peter Venkman with his scare feature. Just a standard original Ray stance. A visionary. Without looking up his name, I wouldn't know. I'm pretty sure this one. Is he the I think he might go with the Dagger Assault. Because I'm pretty sure he does. I think I might have his staff. thing to check with these is the hologram still work. It doesn't really show on the camera. But in person it really does. It's like a pterodactyl. Um. I think this is a G.I. Joe. I'm hoping someone like maybe Mark Burton and Coulter might be able to hear because I'm not massively into the G.I. Joe or Action Force franchise. But it was in the bag and it looked G.I. Joe-y and the colour scheme looked 90s to me. So, again, I just took them all rather than, rather than fuck about. I just took them all. This was the first one I saw on this table, which is Webster from He-Man. His legs are fucked. But I do know how to t fix them because... Uh, Watched a channel called Toy Poloid, massive channel. Shows you how to fix them, it's quite easy. Um, now, I know this is a 9 to £10 figure on its own because I sold one of these at Birmingham, and that's Marmot, which is Mumra's dog. Which, incidentally, does look like the dogs a bit from uh, Ghostbusters, the film. Which I'm surprised they never released a figure of them back in the day. Probably because they were worried that they'd get sued, that it was too similar to them, but surely they had it in their film, so. Uh, buzz off he's really grotty man I, I clean all these before I sell them there's a lot of sellers I notice at the toy fair who don't clean the toys whereas I always clean them up bag them up 
and obviously I seem to do well with my loose figures. And the last one is uh, Captain Planet. Oh, for crying out loud, my blooming t laptop's gone into screen mode, so I can't fucking see. I can see myself again now, which is lucky for me, not lucky for you. You can all see me. Uh, Captain Planet. Again, these all just go on the store. And actually, I did get another figure from the to uh, car boot. I paid a pound. It's from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series. It's actually from the film. I want to say Razor. I think it is. And he's the mutating one. Again, this is a 10 to £12 pound figure. I paid a pound for him. And he's all complete-wise. He's got his tail, which I'm pretty sure the last one I sold didn't have his tail. And he mutates. So that will be being sold. Um, I don't want to do them. Oh, I miss these. I got these from the boot sale. I think I paid three pound each, which, as you know, is good for the uh, old joystick for the uh, mass system. I've got three of these now, so I need to sell a couple of them. And um, mass system joy pads, which, funnily enough, I I saw some NES pads which I ignore now because NES pads are like four pound at CX, but these are hard to get in nice condition. Because I remember the D-pads used to be pretty shy on them and come off. So for £3, and these are actually from a reset, I paid £9 for the free. I've got about three or four mass systems I need to put controllers with. So it was money well spent for me. No brainer. So yeah, I've got them three for 9 quid. Now I'm definitely showing them last because they're for the collection. And the very first things I bought from the boot sale were a couple of board games. Again, they're vintage. I did look this up. I think this is 60s or 70s. It's Cluedo. And I actually opened it. And I thought, this isn't complete. But for a pound, I know with board games, even if they're not complete, you can strip them down for the parts. Especially a game like Cluedo, with like the weapons, like the candlestick, etc. You can strip them down for parts. And uh, met more than a quid. So, But when I actually got um, sorted this all out, there's not actually that many pieces with a game of Cluedo. But the box is quite big obviously because of the board so yeah i paid a quid for that that will be being resold it's complete there's some damage to the dagger i don't know whether to buy one off ebay or just sell it at a reduced price because to be honest by the time i probably bought the part it won't be worth much profit in that and again a vintage version of risk this is another different variant to the one i picked up last week again it's looks all complete there's some blooming white in it because you've got all the pieces again this was a quid so i picked up them because they're just no brainers i'm going to check them all i'm going to cling film them up and they're going to go up my loft because that's how i store my games because i don't like them going out anywhere where it's damp and i cling film them up purely so when i'm transporting them if they fall over in the back of my car mm. i ain't got about 50 pieces of risk to pick up he says as it starts sliding up next to him so as I say, we went to the boot sale, went to the market, and where the market is, there's a CEX like literally right off the market. I said to Liam, we'll go and have a look. Because so I got a ton of credit, and Liam had got a bit, and uh, Liam picked up Final Fantasy Eight, I believe, I think he paid £8 for it, on voucher obviously. So, um, And I saw this in the window, and it was £35, and I, looked, I asked to look at the condition, and it got all the manuals and everything, and I thought, you know what? I don't treat myself very often, so other than obviously with my CEX credit, I thought I'll pick this up, and that's Metal Slug on the Neo Geo Pocket Colour, which I actually picked up one of these. I'm not even sure if it's in one of my really early videos, but I picked it up from a cash converter in Gloucester years and years ago, and I've never really added any titles to it. Um, try and get it so you can see. It looks really, really good actually, so I mean Metal Slug, they don't make bad games, do they? There's not a bad Metal Slug game, really. Um, and it's got it's three manuals inside there. Cartridge in its protective case. And say, £35 of my credit I spent. I did spend another £40, £45 because I got a mouse for the iMac. One of them magic mouses, which is brilliant. It swipes. It just helps designing and editing more than anything. So I'm not fucking brilliant with a trackpad. But again, it was just CEX credit, so it probably fucking owed me a tenner, really. Because... I'm cheap. Um, and the final thing I picked up was actually Liam bought a bundle of games and this came with it. I think he uh, only paid a tenner. And I said, oh, I've always wanted one of them systems. And he just goes, oh, well, you can have it then. It's got no power supply. It's got no controller. And chances are 
it doesn't work if I'm honest so that being said Mr. Bads has just done a video featuring a game and it's that's your spoiler alert it's an Amstrad GX 4000 I've always wanted one but the chances are if it's used the original power supply but it depends how long ago it was used I suppose it might have cooked itself but it's worth a chance so I'm gonna order a power supply off eBay and give it a go because I would like this system uh, I'm an Amstrad fan I like Amstrad and for free I have to say thank you to Liam for that and the funny thing is is I forgot to pick up pick up shots forgot to show you lot a pick up that I got over Christmas from cash gen cash converters in uh, near me I'm not telling you where it was and it was a GX 4000 game Barbarian 2 complete with Wolf from Gladiator on the front. Uh, they got this priced up at 9.99, which anyone who knows, oh god, this case pisses me off. That's cheap for a GX 4000 game. It's got the instructions. It's got the cartridge, obviously. So I bought it and looked it up. I think it's about 30, 40 pounds. The, these aren't cheap. It's not a cheap system to collect for, really. So, but it also gives me something to try with that so I should if it all works I've got myself another little console to collect for which uh, I'm quite pleased about so that is everything there's been a few things actually added to the collection this week whereas the week before there's obviously the dock and that but not much added to the collection so that was good right <laughs> that's just for Stu because he says apparently everyone who does a jump cut starts with right so I just thought I'd do that I had a complete brain fart then and forgot what I was moving on to and it's the shout out section um, it's going to feature two channels again so uh, please go and check these guys out comment subscribe if you like the content but at least go and have a look and the first one um, is Gernaldinho plays I hope I've said that right sounds like a Brazilian footballer um, he's been very active for over a while now I understand um, that he does a series where he plays a game for the first time in 10 years and encourages others to do so so he also does pick ups Have, does he do um, like a challenge where he has to pick up under £5 or something like that someone does that I'm pretty sure it's him uh, but go over and check his channel as I say leave him some comments he's very active very keen to get involved in the YouTube scene so we need to encourage this sort of behavior although in that we've, we've got people coming back again now Stu's done a video this week Holster's done a video they're all coming back out the woodwork I thought they'd gone into uh, hibernation but it seems like they're uh, doing a big yawn and coming out of it and the second channel is one that I've only discovered in the last week or so uh, so I need to go back and check his back library but he seems to do live streams of Waffleage mainly and talking about his games room and stuff he's got in his games room. He looks like he's got a very nice collection. Uh, he wears a hat as well and does this salute thing uh, like an army hat and it's called Inside the Man Cave. So you'll be discovering this channel as, as new as I am. But uh, he seems quite a nice guy. I think I've saw him quite active on Facebook groups. Um, and I just thought, I've noticed his last video that uh, he's been talking about stuff in his games room and not many comments. So... If, I think if you put yourself out there to do a bit of waffle and a bit of response, it's up to us as a YouTube community, as long as we're interested, to give you one. So uh, that's Inside the Man Cave. Not to be confused with any other man caves. This is Inside the Man Cave. Uh, and basically, I'm going to try and do a shout-out for as often as I can for a couple of channels each video. If you're one of these channels who's trying to get money off everyone, you're probably not going to get a shout-out off me. But if you're like me and the other lads who are just up and starters then you've got a chance you've got a chance of being mentioned here not that it means a lot because sometimes there'll be channels who've probably got more subs than me but they're just people who i find interesting so again that's gernaldinho plays and inside the man cave go and check them out and i think this is probably going to be the end of my video so as always if you're interested in my stuff like comment subscribe if you want thumbs up thumbs down i don't give a shit either way and i'll probably see you in a week's time if i had a decent pickup take it easy youtube